right, so as for progress on the chassis, I think you can see I opted not to go with gloss white on the wheels. I went with gloss black instead, and oh, am I glad I did. I mean, just look at that. Look at how awesome those wheels and tires look. And that SSD scale locking hub really pops off that black. But the primary reason I chose to go with black over white is for the colors that are going on the body. I think this black will really match them a lot better. Now, I've got front bumper all painted. And now this was just scratch built out of styrene. I used a combination of uh, two millimeter and two and a half millimeter. Actually, no, I didn't. I think I ended up using only the two and a half millimeter rod on this bumper, as well as a little bit of uh, 30 thousandths styrene sheet cut out to make this plating in here. And then I just attached it to the deadbolt bumper mount. Just the same way the deadbolt bumper is. So that looks super cool. You can see I got the inner fenders painted and mounted. And now in here, again, that's just some styrene sheet. I believe 20 thousandths and a little bit more cut for some gussets glued in there nice and solid. So those aren't going anywhere. Now initially the plan was to glue the cab to these pieces and then the cab would unbolt as one unit from these three screws on each side. And the front one is actually notched. So you only have to loosen that one and remove these two. That way your suspension doesn't have to come undone just to get these pieces off. But in test fitting, I've realized that with these inner fenders on here, the cab actually fits perfectly. Nice and solid. It can't move around hardly at all. So, in the interest of serviceability, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna keep these pieces so they bolt on, but now I'll never have to remove them. I can just pop the cab shell right back off and put it right back on. It fits down, it almost snaps down over nice and tight. And now, you can see in there, hopefully, my ESC and shock mount that I built. And I actually just spent about 10 minutes, drew that up in CAD, and 3D printed it. So, it gives plenty of clearance in there for that stock steering servo. And the height is just perfect so that my ESC case will be able to sit right on top of it and the hoods can still close down around it. And then all I gotta do is flip the hood up, reach in, flip the on off switch, close the hood, and go wheeling. Now as far as bed design, I mentioned I wanted to make this a two piece bed. One piece for the battery tray and then a top piece that closed around it. Well, this is what I ended up coming up with. This is a piece of 30 thousandths styrene sheet cut into shape here. This width here matches the outside width of the frame rails. And then this, this width here is designed to fit between the frame rails. And then I've got this piece of two and a half millimeter styrene rod in there. And you'll notice the screws. Well, if you look, I actually have another one of those bumper mounts in the rear. And what I can do is slide this battery tray right up in there. That rod will sit on the frame rails to hold the front where it needs to be. And then those screws can actually come up through that bumper mount and hold the battery tray up there so that the stock battery will sit down inside the frame rails. And this end of it here will be right up against the back of the cab. And I'll have enough room left back here to tuck that balance wire in. And then I can just run the plug up here behind the cab to where my battery wire extension will come back from the ESC. 
So you can see I ended up mounting the rear shocks back here. They're back far enough. They don't interfere with the battery at all. And these mounts are just the cutoff tabs from the stock battery tray. Just to use almost like a plastic nut to screw those into. Now you might be asking, these two screws down here, what are they actually going to screw into? Because, I mean, these aren't threaded holes and the holes are too big for these screws. Well, here's your answer. Here is the bed so far. And you can see there is the mount. So this bed will actually slot right in to that bumper mount be screwed in from the bottom with the battery tray and then the bed can actually hinge and now I measured it out and this piece right here will sit on the stock battery and make the bed sit perfectly level now I've still got to come up with how I'm gonna hold the front of it down I'm thinking maybe magnets but I'm also thinking I might potentially be able to make a mount that hooks off the side of the frame with a post that comes down off the bed, slots through it, and then uses a body clip to hold it on. Not sure yet. Um, the first time I take it out, I probably won't even have the bed held down with anything. I mean, we'll see how that goes. But as far as bed design, this is a combination of... Two and a half by 6.4 millimeter styrene strip and two and a half by four millimeter styrene strip. You can see I have everything worked out to the scale sizes are at 25th scale. This is two and a half by six and a quarter inch box and two and a half by four inch box. This is the stuff I use for making custom frames for race car models and stuff like that. Now most of it is the uh, two and a half by 6.4 and then these pieces in here are the smaller stuff and then back here at the hinge more of the two and a half millimeter rod a little bit more of the 30 thousandths sheet made to plate that up just to hold it more rugged and then this rod in here i'll have to look is one and a half millimeter round rod. This actually scales out perfect to one and a half inch roll cage tubing, which is what I use also on 25th scale uh, race car projects. And then for the outside portions of the hinge, I use this 3.2 millimeter styrene tube, which scales out perfectly for three inch exhaust tubing. And then for the headache rack, or headboard on the body, so more of the same, same styrene, more 30 thousandths sheet here for this front plate. And then to get these bends, I just use trusty old Bic lighter to heat the styrene and mold it into the curves. And then these two short straight sections here are separate pieces. And I've glued and sanded those seams Relatively smooth. I don't really care if they're perfect. Now the easiest way to fill these little gaps like this where you're gluing this stuff together Take oh, about a half or a quarter jar of it. any liquid cement. I like this to me extra thin And then just start dunking styrene pieces in there stir it up let them soak The glue will actually dissolve the styrene which is how this glue works and then you end up with a styrene paste you can actually use as a liquid body putty to fill all those little gaps and then it just sands right out just like styrene so now this piece will obviously glue on up at the front of the bed and I still have to come up with either a false floor which is probably what I'm gonna do or I have to make a shelf around the inside of all three of these pockets. Now why you ask? Well, the actual floor of this bed, and I haven't cut the strips yet. These are just some scale two by fours I've cut up. 
I'm going to use basswood strips to actually make the bed floor. And these will be stained and weathered. And they should come out looking pretty damn good. So, I'll show you that process when the time comes. Now, as far as the sides of the bed, this is not the final product. This is nowhere near it. This isn't what it's going to look like. I'm actually going to make a one-piece styrene skin that starts at this corner, wraps all the way around to this corner, and gives this bed full sides and covers up these seams back here where I had to build up the hinge plate. And it'll give you nice full fenders and really a nice finished look. Now how do you plan all that out so that you can cut it in one seamless piece? Well for starters I'm going to use um, 10 thousandths thick styrene sheet for this. Because I mean it's almost literally paper thin. So it'll conform around these corners without losing a whole lot of length. And the way you figure all this out is I mean... You mount this on your chassis, get it to the height that it's supposed to set at, you know, bolt it in so it, it sits exactly where it needs to sit. And then from there, I just take a little millimeter ruler and then just measure down at various points where I want it. That way I can lay everything out on paper. But the other thing you need to know is the total distance around it accounting for the curves so the easiest way to do that just quick and dirty start at one end measure to your first seam which here is about 55 millimeters and then you roll that ruler around it and you just do that all the way around and then you get yourself your preliminary measurement you cut that out on a thin piece of paper strip Hold it up there, clamp it on this side, work your way around, clamp it in a few more spots. And then when you get to the other side, you see how far you're over or shy. Measure it out, trim that off, get it so it's perfect. Once you've got your total distance around, then you can actually go in and do a layout of your bed design. All in one piece. Now you can see I've had to make some adjustments here where it wraps around the back I have to actually move this center line over three millimeters along with these two points here but I can show you real quick once I get this skin cut out of styrene it'll be wrapped around clamped on and glued on Pretty much just like this paper template is now. And I mean you can see there. The style of bed I'm going for. Now where I'm using 10 thousandths styrene sheet for this skin. It's not going to be super solid obviously because of how thin it is. I mean like I said it's almost literally paper thin. Very thin. So what I'm going to end up doing. is I have here some quarter by two and a half millimeter styrene strips and I'll actually edge out the whole bottom in that as well as I'll probably have to cut the radiuses for the fenders out of the ten thousandths sheet to get that glued in there but that'll give me a bottom lip all the way around it and bring the total thickness of the bottom portion to 20 thousandths. And then on the inside, I'll take some of my 30 thousandths sheet and actually cut some support bracing to thicken up you know, right here at the front, right in front of the fender, behind the fender, across the back, you know, just to strengthen everything up. But, I mean, this is going to look awesome on there you know and then i'll also cut another skin to put over this portion of the headache rack that way 
I don't have to worry about filling these seams where that plate is glued in there. That'll just cover all that up. The only thing I haven't decided yet is if I'm going to do that with just the smooth 10 thousandths or if I'm going to do it with some diamond plate pattern. Now I also want to show you real quick how I came up with this bed design. So started out you know, thumbing through Google Images like you do, figuring out you know what direction I wanted to go, whether I wanted to do a military style bed, flat bed, tube bed. Well, I found a photo of a flat bed on a Ford pickup that I really liked. I just wanted to do some tweaking, namely on the side skirts. The one I found had uh, toolboxes hung under the front behind the doors and I thought about going that route first but in the end I decided on the side skirts you know make it look almost more like a gooseneck style flatbed so then I went into Shaper 3D on my iPad took some basic measurements off of the truck with the cab mounted to the chassis figured out you know what my width had to be what my length had to be height wise all of that stuff and then I knew what I was going to be working with was styrene because I knew I didn't want to 3D print this bed. I wanted to fabricate it. And one of the coolest features I think that Shaper 3D has is once you have a design, you can actually split it and take its, you can take its individual bodies and do 2D drawings of them that you can then save as a PDF and print out and use these as your pattern. You know, you get top view, back view, side view, quarter view. So as I started fabricating this bed, I was able to take one-to-one -one scale measurements off of my drawings and also use my drawings to line up all my measurements, all my angles, and really build this bed on the plans. And really get it the way I wanted it. Which was a huge help with these center pieces here on the headache rack. So I mean if you guys have ever had any interest in 3D designing and any of that kind of stuff. And you haven't got into it yet. I definitely recommend checking out Shaper 3D. I mean I've been having so much fun with it lately. I, you know, I used to dread having to 3D design stuff for model projects or RC projects on Fusion 360 just because it took me so long because the, few, the learning curve was so steep and there was so much that I still didn't know. There was so much that I was still learning. But Shaper 3D on the iPad with that Apple Pencil, I mean, everything is just so intuitive. Now, the primary reason I didn't want to 3D print this is because of this right here. I know me. I've lived with me for 26 years. I know myself very well. I get halfway into something and I change my mind. And then I change my mind again. And usually a couple more times. I knew there was going to be adjustments to be made. I didn't want to take that 3D design that I came up with, 3D print it, waste the resin on it, to commit to something that I knew I was going to end up wanting to change. Doing it this way, I was able to get my shell built. And then from there, you know, you've got the basis. You can get it set over the frame where you want it and then start working on your mounting points from there with something tangible. You don't have to try to take a bunch of measurements, do a bunch of guesswork, try to design it all and hope that it prints right and works right for the way that your chassis is set up. You can actually take something tangible and work it all out as you go, just like if you were fabricating something in real life. Now, if you did want to 3D print this, you could still make the shell to design all your hinge setup off of, or your mounts, however you, you're mounting it, and then actually measure out your mounts, go in, add that to your CAD design, and then 3D print it all again. Once you've got all that stuff figured out using your styrene prototype. Kind of working backwards. Instead of using 3D printing as the prototype, you're using a tangible scratch-built model as the prototype. Now, I've also 
been working with that resin for a fair bit of time now and I know that a well constructed well glued styrene bed is going to be far stronger and far superior to anything that can be 3D printed in resin. Now if I had say uh, an Ender 3 which I actually want to get eventually and I could print this in filament actual plastic I probably would have gone that route just to save myself some time but you know coming from the model building side of it too part of me real still really enjoys scratch building with styrene all right so I said I was going to show you some tips on detailing your dashboards to really make them look good well Me being me, I forgot to grab the camera when I actually did all this work. So, I'll just describe it for you. So, after I got this primed, I airbrushed the entire dashboard and steering wheel steering column piece with MCW gloss black to get that glossy look to the parts that are steel. And then what I did is I went in and brush painted some Tamiya XF85 rubber black on the vinyl dash pad. It really cuts down on the sheen. And now if you wanted to, you could actually go in and brush paint over top of that with a semi-gloss clear coat. And I think that would really make it pop and really take it the extra mile. Now you can see down in there the little latch button for the glove box. You know, that's just... Not this one, but fine tip silver sharpie. Just tap it in there, pick that detail out, you know, and then on the steering wheel, I did the ring and the horn button also with the rubber black. And then you can see I painted the spokes with just a little bit of silver paint. Now, as for the gauge and radio detail, eh, it's hard to see, but where those details so shallow they're not very pronounced in the cat in the molding and I don't have a gauge face decal for this truck the way I like to do it is I just take one of these um, luma color colored pencils this one's white um, I get these at Hobby Lobby they're super cheap but you just go in and I mean just kind of rub it along the surface just you know just go in and just kind of lightly draw on the surface of that gauge detail and you'll actually only color that raised detail and it, it's very subtle but it definitely makes it stand out now, I mean and you can go in with like an orange color and pick out your needles and whatnot but for this truck I'm going to call it good enough. Alright, so we are finishing up the bed fabrication. You see I've got the bottom floor plate installed. I cut that out of 20 thousandths styrene sheet. Glued it in from the bottom side. And that'll give me something good to glue the wood floor to. And now, you can see I've got the side skin all cut out of styrene. Just matched it to my paper template. Cut that out. This is 10 thousandths sheet. Then I'll go in and I'll add a bottom lip all the way around it. As well as some bracing inside. Just to make it so it's actually got some rigidity to it. You see I've got three sides of it glued now. And pretty simple process. I really like the extra thin cement for stuff like this because it it really starts to soak in and eat that styrene fairly quick so you just apply it to the edge that you're gluing your skin onto give it just a minute you know 15 20 seconds or so to start to bite into that that way you're not really 
melting your skin right away where it's so thin. You just work it from one corner right around towards the end. Make sure it all gets laid in there nice. Then you flip it over. Glue that seam on the underside. And just make sure that it's got no chance of going anywhere. Then you can remove your clamp. Glue right along this top seam here. To get that fused together good so you can actually sand that out. Nice and smooth. And if you really wanted to, you could take a little extra time with some of that liquid styrene putty that I showed you earlier. Lay that in there, smooth it all out, sand it, maybe use a little bit of Tamiya filler putty if you have to, and really get that completely seamless, but I don't really think you need to. Just go ahead and get this glued up the rest of the way. Again, just working our way from the start right around to the end. Make sure it's lined up at the top rail here as close as you can get it. And then just clamp it down so it doesn't go anywhere while that glue starts to cure. Get some down into this seam here. Now where this extra thin is so thin, it will actually, through capillary action, soak right down inside that seam between that piece of flat stock and this piece of sheet and really bond them together nice and tight. And just like that, she's pretty well glued up. Just get some going along this top seam here. As good as I can. Without making too much of a mess of it. As well as right here on the very front. Just to make sure it's glued at every possible point. And then once that dries out. Be able to go back in, sand everything one last time, and then start into the rest of it. Once I've got it all sanded out too, I'll also be ready to go ahead and glue on the headboard. I think it's going to look pretty sweet once it's on the truck. Alright, so we're making some more real good progress. We've got all the electronics pretty much sorted now. We've got... The 030 Torque Beast from MoFo installed. Got the ESC sitting where it needs to. And I ended up having to actually take the entire case off of the ESC. When I designed my shock mount tower, I didn't account for the battery plug on the ESC. So I wasn't going to be able to plug the battery wire in and keep the ESC sitting low enough to fit under the hood. But no big deal. It is what it is. It's sitting in there hard enough. It's not going to go anywhere. I've got all the wires zip tied to the frame out of the way. The interior fits on nice and perfect. Cab fits on nice and perfect. You can see we've got the bed all finished up and painted. Still hinges flawlessly. Now as for holding the front of the bed down, you can see I've got the stock Velcro battery strap in here. Well, I've also got another piece of velcro here i think what i'll end up doing is just gluing this up inside the bed floor so that when the bed comes down it velcros onto that battery strap to hold the front of the bed down and then of course the back is hinged but she's getting much closer i've got the cab and the hood in base coat right now had a little hiccup on the cab I don't know if my airbrush wasn't clean enough or what, but it spit 
some black specks onto the right front fender when I did the first wet coat. So I've got to let that stuff cure up so I can sand that out a little bit and then put two more wet coats of the first color on it, mask it, put the second color on it, wet sand it all, clear coat, polish, all that. So we're in the home stretch. We're getting closer. But now you can see I'm working on the basswood bed floor. See, I've already got the middle done in three strips, and I've got the piece for the right side here done. And I just want to show you real quick how I do that. So for starters, I've got this piece of basswood strip here. I'm not 100% sure. It looks like it's, um, I don't know if it's measured out in metric or standard. Okay, so it's one inch by about an eighth of an inch thick. And I believe one foot lengths. I think I got this stuff at Hobby Lobby a long time ago for another project that I never ended up actually doing. So I'm starting out with this, just taking measurements of what my pocket is to cut it out into a square. And then for the side pieces, obviously you have to cut your angle in. And then once I've got it so it's fitting happily, I pull it back out and then I cut it into three pieces. So where this one is just a hair shy of 21 millimeters wide, I'll go ahead and mark it just shy of 7 and just shy of 14 millimeters. That way we've got three equal width planks. And then this stuff, of course, being basswood, is so soft. Super easy to cut, especially with the grain. I just zip right through it with my X-Acto knife and a sharp blade. Just want to watch your fingers. And make sure you keep your blade right up against that ruler. So you don't put any stray cuts in there. And then, of course, once you get the line deep enough, you really don't need your straight edge anymore. Just work your way right down through that. And go ahead, split this piece in half. And then I'll show you how I stain this stuff to look more like an oak bed flooring. All right, so once you got your three pieces cut, I like to just kind of clean up the edges a little bit. Just with a flat file, or you can use an emery board, or a piece of sandpaper. Doesn't really matter. Whatever you've got on hand, just to kind of smooth it up good. Where you made your cut. Also helps give them just a little bit more clearance when they fit back together inside that bed pocket. You can see right there, I accidentally sliced into it a little bit. Let the ruler come off the rule, the let the knife come off the ruler a little too much. That's okay. Not a big deal. 
Okay, so once you've got them all cleaned up and ready to go, I like to just fold over a piece of masking tape and stick it down. And then I go ahead and I stick my boards right to it to hold them in place while I'm staining them. Now staining these is super easy. All you need, really, is two paint brushes and three different products. I use the Tamiya panel liner in light gray and black and Tamiya X26 clear orange acrylic. So we start with the light gray panel liner. Make sure it's shaking up good. And then I don't like to use the little brush in the bottle for this because it takes too long so I just use a nice fairly wide paintbrush dip it in there get your brush wet and then just brush it on now because basswood is fairly porous it soaks it right in nice and quick and you'll notice that as it sits the color actually gets a little bit lighter than when you initially brush it on so just start out with just one pass and then if you don't like the color you want it a little darker you can always give it another pass but I mean it soaks right in nice almost instantly and now the net for the next step before I put the black on because we want to use that black to kind of help deepen up the wood grain a little bit so what I like to do is actually take my exacto knife and then just kind of randomly scratch with varying pressures for different depths with the grain to kind of help deepen some of it and that'll really hold that black in there good There's really no set method to this, just randomly slicing with your knife. You want a good sharp blade too, so you can get fairly deep without too much pressure. But you also don't want to go too deep either. So once you've done that, grab your brush again and your black panel liner. And now for this layer, you're not going to want to use as much. So I dip my brush in, then I just wipe it off on the edge of the bottle, and then just brush it on. Use both sides of the brush so you use up what's on there, and then that's it. That's all I put on it for the black. You let that soak in. Now you can also use any of their other colors for this as well. You can use the dark gray, brown, uh, dark brown. Play around with it, you know. Start on a scrap piece and just kind of experiment and see what you like better. But I've found that for a nice rich golden oak look, this process here with these three colors give the best results for the look I'm going for. Now, you can see again it's dry to the touch already because that the basswood just soaks that oil in so quickly now the next thing you're going to do take a little bit of sandpaper this is just 500 grit and just give those a quick sand over top you want to kind of lighten up some of that black that's on the very top and then it'll leave the wood grain dark but you'll also get a little bit of light mixed in there as well on the very top. Now you don't have to go 
hog wild with it. You don't have to sand it right down to nothing. Just kind of give it, you know, a quick once over just to kind of fade it down a little bit. So hopefully you can see that right there is about the color we're going for. Get that little bit out of the way there. And then, now, you could just leave it just like this, and it'd look like a really nicely weathered, almost like a barn board, which would actually be really cool as well. But, for this particular project, our next step is to take our clear orange, and you're going to want a separate brush for this. You don't want to be mixing the oil paints with the acrylics. So you just take this, and I just take it right out of the cap, and then just brush it on. And with this coat, you can go a little thicker, use a little more. Make sure you get good full coverage. And it's still going to dry super quick, because acrylic already dries quick as it is. But you've got that wood soaking it up. So it's not actually sitting on the surface because this is, this to me, acrylic is fairly thin paint, especially this clear stuff. So don't be afraid to use a fair bit of it. Brush it on there, work it in good. And then let it dry. And you can see you end up with a real nice, dark, almost golden Almost like a finished oak slab in a real bed. And then once I get these done, I'll let them sit and dry for 10 to 15 minutes. And then glue them down into the bed floor. And then to glue them in, doesn't really take a whole lot. If you do a good enough job on your cutting to make sure they fit tight. And I usually actually cut them just a little bit big and then work my way down to the size they need to be little by little that way I can get them fitting nice and tight and then you really don't even need very much adhesive to hold them in I find for something like this holding this basswood into the plastic really all you need is say a five minute epoxy like this stuff from BSI or even something like Mod Podge or um, E6000, anything like that. Just, a, just something that's going to bond the wood to the plastic. You don't need much.